Recently, my team lead mentioned that it's time to create a randomizer for our front-end releases. We have several front-end developers and every two weeks a few of us need to manage the release. I thought it would be a good idea to build a Node.js application that can work with a Google spreadsheet to handle this task. In this video, I will explain how to create it. I will create a simple Google Sheet with four columns. Can be selected column will serve as our selection pool. I will input some names into this pool. Every two weeks we will randomly choose a person from this pool and move them to the winner column. This will occur when the next selection date arrives. I will use the date to ISO string function to store the next selection date. When the time comes, Jame is selected and the value of his cell will be moved to the winner column. Additionally, it will be moved to the cannot be selected column and we will add two weeks to the release date. This cycle will continue until everyone has participated at which point all the individuals will return to the selection pool. I use the command npm init-y to create our Node.js app silently. Now we can install our dependencies. I will use the Google spreadsheet npm library to programmatically modify our sheet. As we can see in the documentation, we need to install the Google Spreadsheet library and also the Google Auth library to connect to our Google API. Additionally, I will add the node scheduler to run our code every two weeks. Don't forget to create a git ignore file to prevent the node modules folder from being added to the git repository. Also here I've added credentials.json because we'll store the secret key from the Google API in this file. It should not be included in your public code. To use the Google Sheets library we need to get credentials. Here is how to do it. First, you need to go to Google Console. There is the link. Next, create a new project. I named it Spreadsheet1. Then choose I am an admin and go to service accounts. Create a new service account. You can skip most settings except for the name. For me it's admin. Click on the generated email and go to the keys tab. Click add key and download the JSON file to your project folder. Remember to rename it to match your git ignore file. Make sure not to track these credentials with git. I'll also install the Preteer package to format our code and set the CJS extension to be managed by Preteer. Now, let's create a main.cjs file. You might find the CJS extension unusual, but there is no need to worry. It's simply used to identify the file as a common JS module. Recent versions of Node.js require this clarification. After that, I'll import the necessary libraries. The next step will be the load credentials function, which will read our credentials from a JSON file and return them. 
Then I'll add the initialize spreadsheet function, which takes a private key and client email to set up our sheet. Remember to add your sheet ID from the browser link. Now I'll create the main function, which will contain our core logic. For now, it should just log the title of our spreadsheet. But you might notice I get a strange response. To resolve this, we need to grant access to our spreadsheet to our client email. And if you encounter another error, you may need to enable the Spreadsheet API for your project. You can do this by following the link provided in the error message. Let's set up some constants for our small app, and I'll explain each of them. Max participants represents the total number of slots we have available for participants, which is currently set at 30. Selection pool column index indicates the column index in our selection pool, starting from zero. Already participated column index tracks those who have already been selected using the same indexing system. The next date cell contains the row and column indices of the cell that holds the date for the next selection. Similarly, we store the winner's cell the last constant defines our cycle length in days, which is currently set to 2 weeks. Now we'll retrieve our sheet from the document using its index. We need to load the cells, so we will load the matrix of cells up to our maximum number of participants. It's crucial to remember that the load cells function doesn't fetch the data, it simply prepares it in the sheet variable. Next, we extract the actual data for our participants using a helper function. This helper function will iterate through each participant cell and collect the data with the cell formatted value before returning an array. Then we'll check if our selection pool is empty, meaning everyone has already participated. If so, we must reset the pool with the return all function, which transfers values from the already participated to the selection pool and clears the winner's cell. I do return right after moving everyone back because we need to reset them first, and only in the following cycle will the algorithm pick a new winner. Remember, changes made to the sheet variable won't immediately affect the online spreadsheet. We must save changes with sheet.saveUpdatedCells. Now for the main logic of selection. We check if the date has arrived, and if so, we update the winner and the next selection date. The checkDate function takes the next date string from the date cell and converts it to a JavaScript date. For now, I'm just returning true.
to test our app. But we'll later check if the current date is past next date string. The update winner function picks a random participant from selection pool, finds the next available cell in the cannot be selected column, places them there and updates the winner cell. To find the next available cell in the cannot be selected column, we look for the first empty value. The final function update next date takes our next date string, creates a JavaScript date, adds 14 days, and then updates the cell with two ISO string. It's time to test our setup, but I realized I didn't schedule our function to run. Let's fix that. Not schedule, we'll call it every 5 seconds for now. Everything appears to be working correctly, including the date change. I already have a droplet on DigitalOcean where they call Ubuntu servers droplets. To access this machine, I'll open a console. You should install Node.js and npm. as well as the PM2 library from NPM to serve our Node.js application. I've already installed these on the machine, so this step isn't necessary for me. Next, I'll clone my repository from GitHub and run NPM install. After that, you should create a file named credentials.json and paste your credentials into this file, because this file isn't tracked by Git. I'm using Vim here because it's pre-installed on the Ubuntu droplet. To save and quit Vim, I use colon wq. Once that's done, we can run pm2 start main.cjs and our app should work. I hope this was helpful. Please let me know in the comments what programming topics you'd like me to cover. It's really, really important to me. Thank you and see you in the next lessons.